In this video tutorial, I will walk you through how you can set up your very own R server that you could then connect Tableau Desktop to, which will enable you to perform advanced analytics that you can't do out of the box within Tableau's software. So let's go ahead and spin up an R server in the cloud. Go to tableauhq.com forward slash hosting. And now navigate to the top of the page here where you see servers and then the option for a self-managed server. What we want is a VPS server in the cloud. So go ahead and click that. And now we have the option of picking a few different flavors of cloud servers. The lowest version is $3.99 a month. And it comes with one gigabyte of RAM one CPU and five gigabytes of hard drive storage. We're actually gonna need a minimum of 10 gigabytes of hard drive storage, but that doesn't mean we need to buy the next level up. All we have to do is just upgrade this particular custom system to add additional hard drive space for a bit more per month. So go ahead and click buy now. And now we'll scroll down just a bit and we're gonna bump up the hard drive space from five gigabytes up to 10 gigabytes. And that's gonna tack on an extra $2.50 a month. All right, and the next step is to update the operating system. Make sure that you have Ubuntu Server 16.04 64-bit selected. Nothing else here needs to change. So we'll click continue. And now we're gonna go ahead and check out. So if you scroll down, if you're a new customer, just go ahead and fill out all the information below. And then obviously the payment information. But since I'm already an existing customer, I'm gonna go ahead and log in and then enter my payment information. So I'll be using a Visa card. Agree to the terms of service and check out. You may be prompted to press next at this next screen here. Just go ahead and do so. Okay, so once you see the screen, you'll know your order has been successful. And the next step is to click on the link directly below that says go to your client area. And you'll also receive an email just confirming your order and also having some important information there like your IP address and other details. So now click down here to go to your client area. So we can see that I currently have two servers that are up and running, the newest one being the one right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on this one you should only see one here if you're a new customer though. When you come to the screen, you might see a message that says offline. And that just means your server is still in the process of provisioning itself. So it should be up and running shortly. But if you wanna double check on the status of your server, just click on the button that says VNC and click on the HTML VNC button. And what we just did was basically plug a monitor directly into the server and we can see what's currently running on it. So at this point in time, we really can't connect to the server externally, but we will shortly once this process of the initial boot up has been finalized. And this may take up to 15 minutes to complete. Okay, if you see this message, you know you are good to go and you can log into your server. But we don't necessarily want to log in using the VNC interface because we can't do things like copy and paste large lines of text. You'll have to manually type everything out using the VNC interface. So let's go ahead and just close this for now. Okay, so the next step is actually connecting to this server 
using the SSH protocol. And we can do that on a Mac using the terminal application. Or if you're running on Windows, you're going to need to install a program called PuTTY. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. So Mac users, you're going to be typing SSH space root R O O T at your IP address, which is listed down here. Press enter. It may prompt you to continue. So type yes. And now it's asking us for a password to log in. And your initial password is going to be listed under the additional information tab over here to the right. This will be the password that you'll be using for that first login. So we can copy and then paste that right in and then press enter. And as you can see, I'm now logged in to the server. All right, so Windows users, let's now explore how we can use the PuTTY application to do the same exact thing that we just saw on the Mac. All right, so here we are on a Windows machine. We'll go ahead and just open up Google Chrome. And now just pop into Google and search for download PuTTY. And now we can go to the main PuTTY page or just click the neat little link up here that Google is suggesting to us. And depending upon whether or not you're running a 32-bit or a 64-bit version of Windows, select the proper link. And in most cases, it will be the 64-bit. If your computer is, I would say anything beyond 2010 is running a 64-bit OS. So go ahead and just click that link to download the PuTTY software. Once the PuTTY software has completed downloading, just run the installer. It takes about 15 seconds. It's a very light program to install. And then you should see an icon on your desktop. If you don't, just pop into your Windows and just do a search for PuTTY. It'll pop right up. Upon clicking the PuTTY application, you'll be prompted to enter an IP address. We'll now type in that same server address right here. Making sure that the SSH radio button is selected and press open. If you're prompted, click yes. And now instead of listing out all that code like we did on the Mac, we're just gonna log in as the user root. And our root password, under the additional information tab, right here. And if for any reason the copy paste does not work, you can try to manually type in your password. And if you're still having difficulty, just go ahead and create a ticket and reach out to support. They'll be able to help you reset that password. All right, so as you can see, I had to manually type the password out because the copy paste was not working for me. And from this point on, what we'll be doing in this tutorial will be identical. So whether you're using the PuTTY application on a Windows machine or the terminal application on a Mac, it'll be the same. All right, so now that we're all logged into our server with our root user, let's go ahead and change our root password so it's not this long password that's impossible to remember. So go ahead and type P-A-S-S-W-D, and then enter your new password. Okay, and now the remaining steps in this tutorial to get this server up and running are pretty text heavy. So what I've done is actually created a step-by-step -step web page where you can copy and paste the various lines of code so you can move through this much faster. So go ahead and navigate to Tableau HQ 
youtube.com forward slash tutorials. From the tutorials page, locate the Tableau Plus R tutorial and go ahead and launch this particular tutorial. Click on part one, set up our server. And just a brief overview of what we'll be doing. We'll set up Ubuntu. We'll add the necessary R repositories, install both R base and R serve. We'll enable remote access and ultimately we'll be able to connect to Tableau. So as you scroll down, you see, we've already done a few of these steps. We have our server up and running. We've logged on to our server and now we just went through the step of changing our password. Let's now install the necessary updates. So copy this line of code, sudo app dash get update, and put that into your terminal. If for any reason the update does not complete successfully, just type sudo reboot, and that should restart your machine. Give it about five to 10 minutes to come back online and then retry the sudo app get update step and it should succeed. To make things go a bit faster, I'm going to set up a split screen on my Mac so I can have my terminal window on my right side and the left side would have the code that we'll be pasting in. So I'm holding down on the maximize to drag it to the left part of the screen and then clicking on the right side of the screen. So now that the update has succeeded, we're going to add an external Ubuntu repository. And this is specific to R. So we'll just copy and paste that line of code. Same thing for this one, copy and paste. And now that we have our updated external Ubuntu repository, we're going to rerun the studio app get update step. We can see that there's now a number five and six that have been added since our previous sudo app get update. So everything we'll need to properly install R. Now we'll go ahead and install libcurl for open SSL dev. This is going to enable us to download packages. Select Y for yes abort. So if for any reason this step does not work for you, just go ahead and copy this text into your browser search bar, paste it, copy again, and then paste it into the terminal and press enter. Y to continue. And now it's working. So for some reason, this particular line of code can sometimes bring an extra space or a foreign character with it when we're pasting it into the terminal. And by simply pasting it up in our top browser bar, we're able to parse out any extra characters and just pull in the exact line of code that we need. So we don't have any issues with random characters coming in and causing issues. The next step is to install R. So let's copy this line of code to install our base. Select Y to continue. And I'll just fast forward through this install. Okay. So now that we have our base installed, we can now actually enter the R environment. In order to do so, we'll type sudo space dash I space uppercase R. And now we can see that our screen has changed within our terminal as we are now inside of R. So now that we're inside of R, let's install our first R package, which is R serve. And this is the package we'll be using to connect Tableau to our R server. Let's type install dot packages, open parenthesis, single quote, R serve, single quote, and then a closing parentheses. 
This will kick off the R server package installation. So I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward the video until this completes. All right, so that only took a couple of minutes to install. And the next step is to enable remote access for R server. And that's required for Tableau to actually establish that handshake connection with our R server out in the cloud. So we'll type Q, open and close parenthesis, and that kicks us out of R. We'll save our workspace image. Yes. And now we'll copy this line of code that will enable remote access from our local Tableau desktop to our R server. The next step is to open Tableau and attempt to connect to our R server. Now that Tableau is open, come up to the help menu, settings and performance, and then manage external service connection. We'll need to enter our server IP address here and make sure that the R serve is selected. If you've forgotten your IP address, you simply come back to your server terminal, type ifconfig, and you can just copy it right out of that terminal window. And now we're going to be testing our connection from Tableau to our R server. Awesome. If you see this message, you have successfully connected to your R server. Okay. So the next step in this R tutorial is to dive right into some hands-on exercises using both Tableau and R together to really unlock some awesome insights leveraging the power of R. So let's go ahead and move on to the next video, which will then walk through all the hands-on exercises.